Thanks for joining us. Uh, what did you think of your team's reaction and performance after the result in midweek? Yeah, yeah, that was the main thing we asked them for, to be honest. Um, obviously, the midweek was a disaster, but one of them, it happens sometimes and you just have to move on from it. But the one thing we did say to the players is that we, we did expect a reaction and I thought we got one. Um, obviously, I'm disappointed with the result, given the fact that we were 2-0 up. I thought we played really well first half. Probably got, could have gone in a few more. We, I think we... Missed a couple of key chances at key parts of the game, um, but you've scored two goals and you've gone in two and that. I couldn't have asked for any more than that. Um, second half, I still felt we played all right, um, but a couple of decisions individually in the team have, uh, have ended up costing us. And uh, in the end, it was, I was actually pleased to walk away with a point in the end because it could have gone either way to begin with. But all in all, disappointed. It feels like we've lost because we were two and up. But I couldn't have asked any more out of the players today, so yeah, there's lots, lots of positives. Lovre Drazic, who stepped up from the under 23s today, who came in in yeah. goal, how did you think he did? I thought he was fantastic. Um, oddly enough, he didn't have loads to do, but everything he, he did, he did well. Um, it's always a worry when you've got a new young keeper coming in, uh, but he's been with the 23s since the first game, and, and, the, and the reports have been back really good. Um, he trains with us every Thursday, and Pearcey, the goalie coaches, worked with him and said he's looked great in training, and obviously, we've seen a fair bit of him. Uh, but we got the call from Dagenham to take Josh back because of a COVID issue potentially at Dagenham over the weekend and uh, didn't really give us any, any other options anyway. So, uh, But we'd seen enough of Love Ray to not, not be overly concerned. I thought he, he could cope with it and I, and I thought he did really well today. Um, he probably deserved a bit more out of the game overall, but no, he, I, I was pleased with his contribution. It was good. Borough had a very strong penalty appeal that wasn't given. Uh, Hendon were awarded one. What were your thoughts on, on both of those? Well, their penalty is a penalty 100% for me. I'm, listen, we're 60 yards away, and normally if I could say I didn't think it was, I would. Uh, but for me, he's, JT's got too tight to him, but if he stands him up, worst case, they might get a corner. He's dived in and did a clever play for the forward. He's got the penalty, which that's what you want your forwards to do. Um, the one that's more annoying for me is the penalty not given for the handball. It's as blatant as day. I spoke to their manager on the side and he was like, I can't believe he didn't give it. Um, I, I spoke to the linesman after the game with the referee. The referee was good as a goal, to be fair. He couldn't see it from the angle he had. 
One minute the linesman said he didn't see it, then he did see it, and he ended up by saying he wasn't sure if he saw it. Like, well, it, was, it can only be one of two. Uh, for me, Bob didn't give, didn't give the penalty. Um, and it wasn't a difficult decision because the guy's put his hand towards the ball and that goes in, we get the penalty, score your 3-1, it, it maybe changes the game. And also a couple of red cards, uh, one for each team. Uh, what did you make of those? Obviously, firstly, George Moore's for, obviously for Harrow. Yeah, I mean, George's one, there was about eight tackles on the trot in about five seconds. Um, all, I thought, well, good tackles, everyone was flying in trying to win the ball. And then I saw their bench reacting to something. I, got, I didn't really see what happened, to be honest, because it happened so quick with all of them. Um, the, I spoke to the referee, he said that George pushed his knee towards the guy's face when he was on the floor. I asked George about it, George said the guy had hold of his leg, he was trying to get his leg free. I've worked with George for a few years now and I would go with what he told me but it's the, funnily enough the linesman uh, managed to be able to see that one uh, but couldn't see the other one which, which was uh, disappointing. Their one, I think if it looked, it looked a clumsy tackle from where, where we were, it did look a, bit, look a little bit dangerous and I think the fact that he's just sent George off means that he's going to react straight away and probably send their bloke off. So on another day, there might have been a couple of yellows. So uh, yeah, listen, we'll look at it on the video. If we can appeal it, we will, because George is a big player for us. Um, but he had, he's not really like that as an individual to do that. So I'll go with what he told me. Captain Sean Preddy obviously went off just after the Hendon's first goal went in. I think he got injured trying to prevent that goal. Anything serious? Is he going to be out for long? Well, he's been struggling a little bit with his knee on and off, and we're trying to manage him with that. Um, but he's a slight tweak of his hamstring. Um, Sean's sensible enough to come off when he knows it's not right, so we're not too sure how serious we should have a better idea um, by Wednesday or Thursday, but we didn't really have much cover there today because obviously, as you said, James Mansfield went down with COVID, um, I think he tested positive for Wednesday. Um, obviously, Ben Trick has left the club a couple of weeks ago, so one minute you've got four or five centre-halves and all of a sudden look them out on just about five and one. You're going to be looking to get anyone in in January, possibly, on the back of that? Yeah, we were anyway, um, so nothing's really changed there. The squad's... So I'm happy with the, with the squad I've got in general. We've got good lads in there. I still think we're punching well above where we should be if you base everything on a budget. Um, and if they carry on putting effort like that in, I've got no concerns at all. But I don't think we've replaced Imran since he went back to Hampton um, because we're not the biggest of sides. And that show probably in Taunton and the other night, albeit they were very good, we were absolutely like a dog with fleas here. I know we were dreadful. Um, but. It, I think we just need a bit more physicality in the side but and uh, just, just an extra couple of bodies around because you're always a couple of injuries or illnesses away at the minute of struggling. I mean, Tottenham, we only have three on the bench. Um, but yeah, hopefully Sean's not too bad, but we'll have a better idea tomorrow and on Thursday than going into Saturday. We, Sean's a big player for us. And if you look at the stats this year, when he's played and when he hasn't played, it makes a big difference. So hopefully he's hopefully fit for Saturday, if not, then the following, following week. How do you think things have gone so far? Are you happy with where you are? Um, you know, considering what you're thinking about and aiming for at the start of the season and what your aims you know, for the rest of the season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I think we're punching well above probably where we should be, which is a credit to the players because they've got us there. But if somebody said to me at the start of the season, um, bearing in mind where we were pre-season, we were a world away from where I thought we were going, where, where we got to. Um, but where we are in the league, still two points off, I think it's two points off a playoff spot. Um, and what we did in the FA Cup, credit the boys, has been fantastic so far and I ripped your hand off at the start of the season for that. I, I guess because I've been at Harrow for so long you still worry about the other end of the table because we're maybe not used to being up there uh, challenging. Um, realistically we will make the playoffs, I don't think we will because I don't think the squad is strong enough and financially I don't think we can match probably good seven, eight, nine other sides and who we'd have to finish above to get there. I don't, I, listen, you, you never know in football but I'm realistic on the targets that we set. Um, but that is probably the target most teams look for. But ultimately, it's getting safe in the league as quick as possible. I think another five or six wins will get us where we need to be. And then who knows where the rest will take you. But there's nothing to stop us going on a good run again. But there's also nothing, not much to stop you going on a bad one. So now all in all, I'm really pleased with where we're at in a minute. So obviously there was a sad news last week. Stuart Hobbs, who's obviously served the club amazingly. Uh, well, over many, many years, uh, passed away last week. It was a round of minutes, round of applause mm. at the start of today's game. Just a few words on Stuart and your experience of working with him. Yeah, I mean, I, I was gutted, really, really gutted. Uh, I've been here six and a half, coming up seven years in February, and I've worked really closely with Stuart and all the time I've been here, and you wouldn't meet a nicer bloke. Um, he'd always go out of his way to help you, he was always there for a chat, but he, as a manager, it was quite refreshing because he'd always ask you how you were. And I can remember 
couple of our say our bad days here over the years. He'd be the first one asking, "How are you doing? You okay?" And that was just a really nice bloke. Um, supported the club obviously through thick and thin. Um, whether that's been with his general support, I know financially he's probably helped out with a few bits and pieces. But just a really nice bloke. And it was although Stuart hadn't been very well, we were still here on a regular basis uh, once we got going again. And literally saw him a week before. And um, yeah, we, we know that he hadn't been very well on that, but he was still getting to all the games and obviously we hoped that he was going to be about for, for a lot longer than he ended up being. So it was, yeah, it was a real shock. Uh, I felt for Peter, the chairman as well, because Peter's been obviously really close with Stuart and they've worked closely together. So he's not only lost a big support to the club, he's lost a really close friend as well. So no, the, the, the boys are really, really, really sad for him and his family and obviously our thoughts with them at a really horrible time.